الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد فيا ايها المسلمون اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون ايها الاخوه brothers and sisters is always we use the khutbah to appeal for the renewal of faith reaffirmation of faith and moral values qala allah ta'ala wa takum minkum ummatun yad'una ila al-khair wa ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhawna 'anil munkar wa ulaika humul muflihun this the stems from our faith our yaqeen reaffirmation that is required because we are busy we are distracted we are sometimes complacent sometimes even foolish so the occasion to remind is an occasion to get us to uplift our spirits reignite our souls and a very pertinent advice from san umar khattab allahu an when he was asked what is taqwa it is a state of preparedness a state of readiness that you cannot neglect you cannot be weak you cannot forget is like walking in the middle of the night in the dark in a path full of thorns you forget you are careless because there are many challenges and certainly in new york is a busy place it is a competitive place it is a worldly place there's no a problem or an issue who you are reminded as is the call the quran that you can succeed if you are uh, continuously in the position of preparedness and i commend of course islamic center of new york multiracial from all walks of life and it has emerged why i've decided to come here because i've heard about it i followed this the, 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 the programs education dawa is the dynamic it is innovative in dawa innovative dawa of mutability al mutaghayyir meaning you understand the society you understand the challenges you're not dealing with some conservative groups in some muslim countries you are in the midst of a very dynamic challenging situation i commend of course the kuwaiti brothers who is supportive of some of the programs for what purpose is to strengthen the unity in the brotherhood because after all in spite of all the divisions quarrels civil wars that you find among muslims the call has always been to consistently remind of us remind us innamal mu'minuna ikhwah fa asdahu bayna akhawaykum wattaqullaha la'allakum turhamun that brothers must be reminded that they have a duty in life and when they find weaknesses it is love and compassion many of us in da'wah face sometimes challenges and loss and lose our patience dying we are all du'at that's why the call for goodness for da'wah the call to do good to respect humanity 
ihsan and rahmah and compassion is a call to every single Muslim. Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah wal mawzat al hasana wa jadil hum billati ya ahsan. Those who call for da'wah must always be reminded that there are procedures, there are methods, qawai, fiqhiyah. How you do da'wah is not just to cause mischief, to lose your patience, but to do it with wisdom. And it is pertinent to understand this call by the Qur'an, in the Qur'an, so many times, بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعَزَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَةِ Three times, repeating, reminding all Muslims in the call for da'wah, it must be with wisdom. Not information, not knowledge, but hikmah. There are three levels. In these days and age of digital technology, full of information. But information is not knowledge. You move up the ladder, you become knowledgeable. But not all knowledge promotes goodness. That is why the term is hikmah. And knowledge, I remember reading the call to knowledge by Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. When ask knowledge and love for scholarship, you must continue to learn and love knowledge and ilm. His reply was, Lazzatul Ma'rifa. Allahi, such wisdom from the words of Ali. Is Lazzat means the best of this, the best of food, the best, the best you can find. That you become really entranced by that level and quality of knowledge. And Ma'rifa, because it's the highest level of understanding. That is why um, in the Malaysian experience where I come from, when you see what you call Islam, Islamophobia, I addressed the United Nations this morning, and I say, why this racism? Why this intolerance? My country is a multi-religious country. We are Muslims, we promote Islam. We tolerate religious practices of the Hindus and the Christians and the Buddhists and the enemies. We name you, we all have it. Why is it that there is so much ignorance, impatience, enmity, including the unfortunate case of the burning of the Quran in Sweden? You know what is our response? They burn one Quran. I give an instruction that our government print one million Qur'an including thousands of copies in the Swedish language to be sent to all centers and universities and colleges and if possible schools in Sweden you can reject if you choose to but please do take a look and understand not fight out of ignorance and I popularized it, this, this um, idea promoted by a Palestinian scholar when he said, it's not a clash of civilization. It's not a hatred of others through knowledge and understanding. It is a clash of ignorance of the jahil, jahil towards others. And it is also a reminder to us Muslims. You condemn others for their ignorance towards you. Please don't repeat that mistake. Muslims have also to appreciate, understand, and tolerate the others. So that is the position, but it's interesting, alhamdulillah, in the Malaysian experience and context, we were able to continue printing one million in all languages, including Bengali. Because I know there are many Bengalis here. <laughs> so, that's the way we counter this facade, this ignorance, this weakness, and uh, through knowledge and understanding. So brothers and sisters in Islam, let us use this occasion. The opportunity you have is an interesting contradiction when you see 
Western societies in America. You still have the freedom. You still have the opportunity to promote what you believe is right. And you have to do so with wisdom because Muslims must set a very good example in akhlaq, of course in their faith, in their akhlaq, in their knowledge and in their level of sophistication or sophisticated understanding. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ بارك الله لي ولكم بالقرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات وذكر الحكيم وتقبل مني ومنكم تلاوته إنه هو السميع العليم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحابه الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله التاعي إلى رضوانه الله صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فيا أيها الناس اتقوا الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وطاعته لعلكم تفلحون Brothers and sisters in Islam You know we try to always promote these ideals So my limited experience in Malaysia when they ask what is your vision what is your concept? What is the philosophy of development, growth in my country? Then I said, Madani, because the city of Madina, after the Hijrat of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from Makkah to Bukharamah to Yathrib, named Madina al Munawwarah because the city of Madinah became a prime Madani civilization and served as an epicenter of Islam where there is the mosque La Masjidun Us Sisa al Taqwa a difference between that mosque viable, active, vibrant and a mosque with ill intentions Muraran wa Kufran but remember Madina society is a society par excellence it is ecumenical because it is not a normal society it is a society with economic fundamentals, with education with trade and business but it is a city and society with values promoting goodness it is not an ordinary society talking about growth sustainability digital transformation or climate change yes these are important traits and policies but this, the difference is it is a society, society based on faith and moral values it is a society that promotes understanding knowledge and more importantly, values of humanity. It's society that promotes ihsan and compassion and rahmah. A society that can build and unite essentially the Ummah Muslim Islam 
and the Madina community of all religion and race. That's why we say it is based on the spirit of the Hadith Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Itqan fil amal is a city and a community which is not ordinary, which is not average, but it is based on a desire to improve ourselves. We ask you this week you have that knowledge. What about next week? The same knowledge. Next month, the same knowledge. Next year, the same understanding, the same book, the same hadith, the same Quran. There is no idhad fil amal. You expect things to change. We expect digital transformation. Why we don't transform ourselves? So there is a difference. Striving for excellence. That's why in the surah, when when the Quran talks about ummatan wasata, it's not average. It's not mediocrity. It is striving for excellence in a moderate, in the spirit of moderation. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا It's the beauty of calling Muslims as Ummah that practice, practice understanding and moderation. Not moderation in terms of mediocrity. We worry because when people translate Ummatan Wasata average, moderate. No. Ummat Wasat must be striving for excellence in faith, in akhlaq, in education, in technology, in sciences. That is the Muslim community. Not the average, not mediocrity, but excellence. That's why a scholar Sheikh Maim from the United States, originally Palestinian. Remember, Marhaum Ismail Farouqi, when he talks about Madina, he says, par excellence. Not ordinary. Not average. You can find communities like that in the past or afterwards. Because it is a community based on faith, moral values, integrity of man, good character, but very focused on economic survival, Abu Rahman bin Auf, very focused on knowledge, as Mus'ab bin Umayr and Abdullah ibn Umi Maktum before the Hijrah. There's also the spirit of community. The, the, the mosque becomes vibrant with classes, with knowledge, with learning Quran and meeting to uplift the standards of the community. Because the mosque is central. That's why I'm, I have to reiterate my admiration to the committee here to use the mosque as a center for education, for knowledge, for da'wah. Other than, of course, man amana billah wal yawmil akhir wa akhama salah wa ata zakah wa lam yakhsha illa Allah. For that's the criteria of a successful mosque already unlinked in the Quran. Let us therefore summarize what is the spirit of Madina, that we call Madina, Madani, nation or society, is to promote understanding, to focus on knowledge, to temper the cause of the people, not to talk about sustainability and economic growth and allow for groups being ignored and marginalized and poor. Not to talk about change that benefit only the top elite, the ruling clique and their families. There is a difference in Islam that governance means protecting every single citizen in your society. Governance means to protect those the poorest amongst you, the most, the minority among you, the marginalized that essentially make the Madina society and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what we try and strive in the Madani society, the ingredients, the forms.
positive ingredients of Islam. So let us therefore remember this simple message here because we will be asked the following week, inshallah, we still survive and keep well and come back to the most boy. Jumah prayers and if I were the Imam, I will then ask from last week, did we improve a little in our understanding? Did we improve a little extra in our prayers? Did we give a bit more sadaqah? Did we um, learn a bit more on technology or on digital technology? Because a Muslim, a dynamic Muslims actually, will have to strive par excellence to improve from our performance this week. That is the difference. Not only to judge others, but to judge ourselves. May Allah give us the strength and the commitment. قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أنبيائك ورسولك وملائكة المقربين الله مغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأزل الشرك والمشركين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر إن الله يأمرنا بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفشاء والمنكر والبغي ويعذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يذكركم ولذكر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله